The falling snow blankets Old Stonewall Farm with a holy silence. As the season of Advent ends and we enter into Christmas tide, here on this Christmas Eve morning, I get my breakfast ready and head out into the snow for I have chores to do, chicken chores. I didn't even get to decorate the tree inside the house this year, but I'm making sure that the chickens have a wreath on their coop. It's the least I could do for them. But the girls are slowing down with their egg production, and so that means I have to rethink my holiday baking because I don't want to run out to the store and buy more eggs. I have to learn to make do with what I have. And I think that is what I like about a quiet, simple Christmas. Looking all around me to see what God has already provided, not just eggs, but love and hope and peace and friendship. Sometimes a quiet Christmas can be a blessed Christmas if we just embrace what we have and cherish it. Just like Laura Ingalls Wilder in Little House on the Prairie, she was so happy one Christmas with a simple tin cup and a peppermint stick. If only we could be that happy as well. My friends, welcome to Old Stonewall Farm as we enter in to the season of Christmas. I think that's why I love Laura Ingalls and Little House on the Prairie and her accounts of Christmas's past because they were so simple. They embraced what was available to them. They embraced what the circumstances were. So when I think about those little tin cups and a peppermint stick that they were so happy with, I wonder how come we're no longer happy with the circumstances we have. The Grinch was correct when he realized that Christmas didn't come with tinsel or bows or anything that was wrapped underneath the tree. He realized that Christmas was so much more. And I think we need to start realizing that once again, that Christmas is so much more than what we prepare and what we buy. It's a quiet Christmas here at Ulster Well Farm. Quiet is good. All is calm and it is once again a small Christmas, just my husband and myself. And some people might think that that's lonely, but it isn't. I'm realizing that Christmas is about opening up our heart to where we are right now in our lives. I was at the hairdresser the other day and I was listening to everyone talk about their Christmas preparations and they all talked about family coming and the big feasts that they were going to have. But as a pastor, I hear a different side of Christmas. I hear of the family that no longer gathers together. I had one person say to me the other day that she wants to cry every time someone asks her, so are you gonna see family? And it just breaks her heart because she isn't. I was speaking to another person who felt a kind of left out because all her friends are talking about all their children that are coming in from all different places around the country and she's going to pick them up at the airport. And my friend said, I don't have any children. It's just myself and my cat tonight. The world will look at that as sad, but we shouldn't. Again, we need to embrace where we are in this moment. We need to to not have expectations of what Christmas should be and just allow Christmas to be. Thinking a lot about reframing the holidays, reframing what it's all about and trying very hard to not have expectations. Christmas was all about plans that didn't work out. Mary and Joseph, they had to travel to have the census taking and she was about to have a baby and they had to travel and she's in that condition and turns out they get to Bethlehem and there's no rooms for them available because everybody's coming in to have the census counted. 
no rooms available. Well, that wasn't a great plan, but God had another plan. They found a place that the innkeeper gave them out of generosity, and she was able to bear forth God's child. The plan of a great ruler coming to help those who are downtrodden, and that great ruler is a little baby born to peasants. That's God's plan. If you have Christmas expectations that don't seem to pan out, take a step back and reframe it, rethink it. And what could it be that God is saying to you to, to see the beauty of what is really happening on this holy night? Christmas simplicity is not about the presence under the tree. It's not about parties and big family gatherings. Christmas is really about the divine breaking into the silent of the night. And if we don't take some quiet time during the holidays to listen to that divine silence, then we will miss the real meaning of Christmas. So whatever your Christmas might be like this year, if it's loud and boisterous, take some time away and find that quiet place. If it's already quiet, then don't lament and don't feel badly that it's quiet, but really take that as a gift and hear what God is trying to say. And if you find that your Christmas expectations have been dashed, look for the bright star shining new light on your life saying, no, no. God has something else for you. God had another plan for you. Ever I'm feeling down or struggling. And instead of saying, oh, I wonder what God is going to do, or rather than saying it like that, how is God going to do this? Turn it around and say, I can't wait to see how God is going to do this. Find the positive. Christmas is about God saying to you, you are not alone. You are not going to be forgotten. You are not going to be left totally struggling by yourself. God said, I'm with you in the mess of life, in the craziness of life. I've come to be right there to assure you that I understand what you're going through. I'm not some lofty God out there far, far away who doesn't understand the human condition. So yes, a lot of people will look at my quiet Christmas and maybe feel sorry for me, or maybe feel like, oh, wow, you know, you want to come over to our place? It's okay. I like the quiet. And I don't have any gifts for anybody either. And that's okay too. The wise men didn't give their gifts to Jesus until January 6th, Epiphany. So if you really want to get technical, we should exchange gifts on January 6th. That's my excuse and I'm sticking with it, okay? One of my favorite stories around this time of year is about an old cobbler who woke up that morning and he prayed hard and he was like, tonight I'm going to see God. Tonight I'm going to not be alone anymore. But I'm paraphrasing here. The old cobbler decorated his house the best that he could. He brought in the evergreen and he made a meal. And got out the best blanket and the candles. And, and after he prepared everything for his Christmas guest, he waited. A knock came at the door. He was so excited. He thought this was God. This was my Christmas present. And it wasn't. It was a beggar. The cobbler invited the beggar in and gave him something to eat. Hours went by and the cobbler was wondering, okay, where's my Christmas guest? Another knock on the door and it was a, a lost child. As night began to fall, the cobbler began to, to wonder, did God forget about me? There was a knock on the door and an old lady who was cold and shivering. And so the cobbler invited her in and wrapped her in the blanket that he had put out for the Christmas guest. By now it was late and Christmas day was about to be over. And the cobbler was very sad because he's been alone for so long and he really wanted God to be his Christmas guest.
So the cobbler, through his tears, fell on his knees and began to pray, why did you delay? And then he heard a beautiful voice saying to him that he did not delay. In fact, he was with the cobbler three times that day. God came, came in the form of those strangers, those unexpected knocks at the door, breaking into the lonely silence. So God said, I did not delay, but I was with you on Christmas day. It's time to head out and light our candles on this silent night. It's a little bit chilly out there. It's a little bit windy. We might have to let go of expectations of a beautiful candlelit night outside and take refuge in a barn. So come. And if you have a candle nearby, light it and join me. Stonewall Farm to your family. I want to wish you a very blessed Christmas. And if you happen not to have a candle physically burning right now, then here, let me share my light with you on this holy night and always. <laughs>